Hi, welcome back to What's Up Doc. Today I'm going to talk about a drug that a lot of people have been talking about because it seems like it could lengthen people's lifespan and in fact also their health span. So what's the name of this drug? Well, it's called metformin. You might say metfor what? Anyway, this was a drug that was developed around 60 years ago for the treatment of diabetes and it's still very much in use today. It's basically the first line drug that's used for diabetes and that says a lot. It says that basically this drug is well tolerated by most people and that it actually has good clinical effects. Now not so long ago actually in 2014 a study was done which showed that it seems like people with diabetes who take metformin live 15% longer than people without diabetes who don't take metformin. Now, if this is true, or even if this is partially true, this is remarkable. So what's the actual lowdown here? What's the truth behind this? Well, the method of the study was um, a retrospective study. So it was actually looking backwards and trying to figure out a pattern of what was going on here. And so in some ways, the data is not so reliable. However, it does bring up some very interesting information. As a result, this has led to a lot more research to try and elucidate how accurate this figure is and also why this would be the case because people really hadn't considered it until then. So how does it work? Well, basically it lowers people's blood sugar, number one, by preventing the absorption of sugar in through the gut, number two, by reducing the amount of sugar that's produced by the liver, and number three, by increasing the amount of sugar that's taken up into the muscles. Now, the mechanism by which it does this is not entirely clear. There's a lot of ideas behind how it does this, and there is evidence of various mechanisms. One of the more interesting ones actually involves the gut microbiome, which many of you have probably heard of. These are the natural bacteria that sit inside our gut and actually have huge interactions with the workings of our body. It's probably more correct to say that we live with them than that they live with us. Another very important mechanism by which metformin is thought to work is by increasing AMPK. So what does AMPK do? AMPK, uh, otherwise known as protein kinase, is a very important enzyme in the cells and it's kind of like a sensor for the cell and for the energy balance of the cell. When we use up energy in the form of ATP, it converts to what's known as AMP, adenosine monophosphate, and this stimulates the production of AMPK, it increases AMPK. And AMPK causes the cell to slow down and to conserve and to break down um, uh, cells rather than to build up cells. So you have a process of catabolism, which means the breakdown of uh, proteins, uh, as opposed to anabolism, which means the building up of proteins. So if you think about it, that a cell is always dividing and creating more cells, well, the less cellular divisions that actually happen means that the less chance there is of a mutation occurring and a cancerous cell developing. So that's how AMPK has its effect on cellular metabolism and cellular production and waste recycling. As a result of AMPK going up and insulin resistance going down, uh, actually insulin sensitivity improving, you have a much better and more favorable metabolic situation in the body whereby glucose is handled better and one of the main reasons why diabetes causes so much damage to the body is because of large fluctuations in glucose levels. In addition, metformin has both antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activities. Now, the consequence of this is that diseases such as cancer, um, neurological diseases, cardiac diseases, metabolic diseases, um, frailty, uh, all of these things are actually improved um, and the chance of developing these diseases goes down and if you have existing disease also the chance of it becoming more severe is lessened and just to tie in everything again together because it's very important as you'll see not just metformin affects ampk levels but also exercise and fasting and the relevance of that is 
going to become apparent because as you'll see we have a question here as to whether we should be using a drug or whether we should be using sport or fasting or maybe a combination of all three in order to improve our health. So which are the relevant studies that have been performed regarding this apparent wonder drug? Well, there was a study in 2013 involving mice, of all things, of course, and this showed that by giving metformin at quite low concentrations, the health span and the lifespan of these mice was significantly improved. It was also given to them in a much higher concentration than it was found to be toxic. So the very interesting thing about this is that at the low concentration, which was tolerated, the mice lived an extra 4% 4, 4 in terms of lifespan, which if you translate into human years is really quite impressive. So other studies that have been done include um, more lab-based studies and again based on mice. And these are still in progress and there's also going to be a lot more human trials underway because the idea of having a drug that can actually increase a person's lifespan is obviously very interesting to many people and um, in so doing we're looking at basically not just increasing people's lifespan but actually giving healthier years of life to people as they grow older. Very often my patients ask me questions about this drug and one of the classic questions is doc if I take this drug can I live longer? And can I live healthier? Well, I think that the jury is still out a little bit on these questions, but I think that there are a lot of potential reasons to believe that it can help certainly to live healthier. We don't yet know how much of an effect it has on lifespan, the length of time that somebody lives, their long longevity. However, my approach to answering the question is like this. If they have diabetes, then it's more clear that they should be taking metformin and possibly they, may be, they should be taking other drugs as well. However, if they don't have diabetes, my approach is one of, of getting them to do much more physical activity, sports, um, to use some kind of um, fasting of some sort. So intermittent fasting um, or, or, or timed eating or whatnot. And I am a firm believer that these methods should be the way forward. Metformin has got an excellent safety profile. It stood the test of time for 60 plus years and this is why it's still around today and why it's used without too much concern. It does have some side effects though. It can cause nausea, it can cause abdominal bloating, it can cause constipation, it can cause diarrhea. In terms of the more risky side effects, you're looking at uh, something called lactic acidosis, which is basically when the body produces lactic acid. And the chances of this happening is higher when somebody does sports, as you will know from when you get a stitch, when you go for a run, it's exactly the same thing, except for having happen except for happening on a much larger scale throughout the body. And this can be dangerous, even though it's rare. The fact that we have a drug that potentially can improve health span and lifespan is very nice and very interesting. However, if it was up to me, I would definitely tell people to not take something that potentially has side effects. We know that sports can be incredibly effective for virtually all disease in terms of reducing mortality and reducing morbidity. Um, the statistics show it, the studies show it time and time again, and this is the thing that I would recommend my patients and all of you to always try to engage in. Sports doesn't really have any side effects unless you fall over, of course. And to come back to what I mentioned much earlier in the video about AMPK, well, sports targets the AMPK in exactly the same way that metformin does. So why would anyone choose to take a drug when they can do something that they have at their fingertips at any time of the day or night? I think it's always attractive, at least in the imagination of people, that there's a drug that can solve all their problems or a problem rather than having to make the actual effort to do something ourselves. However, 
for various reasons, one of them being a kind of learned helplessness, which is when by me taking a drug, I don't have to be active in my own health. I think that it's always preferable to not take medications when possible. And exactly the same goes with metformin. Yes, it has all this wonderful potential, but at the end of the day, we can do most things without drugs, and this is no exception. And to add to that, if a person was taking a medication to help with their lifespan, let's say, then I do think that it probably wouldn't have a good effect on the rest of their life, because why bother doing other things if you've got a pill that does it for you? So I think there's stuff to be missed out on by looking at it in this way. I do think that while research is very important in medicine and in general in life, I think that sometimes it can be a bit divorced from what's actually beneficial for, for us as people. And although this research is interesting and useful, again, if we have alternatives and we do have alternatives, I would go with those. So now let me ask you, what do you think about potentially life extending drugs or health extending drugs? Do you think that they're a good idea or not? Do you think it's ethical? Do you think that you would use such a medication if it existed? And if so, under which situations? I'd love to hear your comments. Please write them below. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.